Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with Tactical Solutions. Hope that you guys are all having a great Sunday. Welcome to our Sunday Stock Talk. This is where I break down the top stocks that you guys see value in. Uh, if you've never tuned on in, just sit back, relax, and kind of see how things go down. I'm going to start sharing my screen so you can see exactly what it is that I'm looking at. Uh, for those that are going to be asking, I am using the Webull trading application. It is free and available to everyone in the U.S., and if you want to download it, uh, the fifth link in the description down below. Uh, right now, they do have a sign-up bonus that if you deposit $5 when you use my link, which is the fifth link down below, you'll earn up to 12 free shares. You do have to have an initial deposit of just five dollars um so let's go ahead and jump right into it if you have any questions all you have to do is you guys should be able to see a little live chat if you're on desktop on the right hand side it should be a little live chat to partake in that live chat um, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. I mean, that's literally just it. Subscribe to the channel, drop a thumbs up, um, and I hope that you learned something new. So uh, a quick little market update on the one hour time frame. I just wanna be able to point out where the market currently sits right now. Uh, we are testing a previous resistance range on NASDAQ right around 310, 315. Um, you can see that based off of previous patterns, which we tested back on February 2nd. We are testing that same resistance range. So again, this is a general range where the market tends to struggle to hold above. Patterns tend to repeat themselves. They do not always have to. But as of right now, as you can see, we're consolidating at the same range that we've been rejected at before. So what I'm going to do is, again, I work with my LPP team every morning during our live sessions. And my focus is to either wait for a break above and then we can go long. Or if we get rejected here and then we begin to retrace, right, we begin to sell off, then I'll short the market by going into SQQQ. So uh, if you have any stock that you want me to break down, share it in the live chat. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Uh, just share the ticker symbol and why you see value in it. And I would be more than happy to break it down for you. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We got Jason asking for ticker symbol meta. So let's go ahead and pop it up here. So we got Meta right on over here, uh, showing signs of higher highs and higher lows, trading above the moving average. I mean, as of right now, right? It's indicating signs of an uptrend. There is no indication of this thing pulling on back other than we're not really seeing much progress beyond 208, right? Um, so when looking at this, it's kind of asking the question, why, are, why have we been struggling so much uh, to break above that 208 resistance? That would be kind of like, I mean, this isn't really a stock that I would consider uh, worthy of day trading, right? It's Meta. It's one of the larger uh, tech companies. Uh, there is huge upside potential if Meta begins to recover, especially after making its you know huge investment and pivot to uh, the metaverse. Uh, but as of right now, one thing that I do want to remind you is if things do begin, if things do begin to get kind of choppy in the market or markets begin to pull back. Uh, Meta's bottom was $88. Right now we're sitting at 206. So over a 100%, nearly a, what is that? 250% return from overall lows to current highs. That's 137% in a perfect world. So again, huge pullback potential. Um, so I would, I would be very, very careful with just buying too much too early on. There's obviously great upside potential, but if things begin to get worse before they get better, I just want to make sure that you put yourself in a position in which you can tolerate worst case scenario. But as of right now, a beautiful uptrend pattern, as long as it continues to hold above the moving average, then that's what I would mainly focus on. If it begins to trade below the moving average and it begins to sell off, then that's where I would be like, hey, that's a break of pattern. This pattern is no longer bullish. I would get out of that position, right? So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, again, if you want me to break down your top stock, drop a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and feel free to partake in the live chat. Only those that are subscribed can partake in that live chat. So um, let's go ahead and jump right into it. We got ticker symbol, uh, we got Google. Let's go ahead and break that one down very quickly. So again, another position or another stock that I wouldn't necessarily consider a day trade, right? Google is, again, one of the most valuable companies that's publicly traded. So if I were to ask you based off of recent patterns, right? So a little quiz for you guys. Um, if I were to ask you based off of recent patterns, is this currently where we sit at 105.74 based off of recent patterns? Are we overbought? or oversold? You guys can let me know in the live chat. Are we overbought or oversold 
based off of recent patterns. So on the one on the four hour time frame, we could see lows, we can see highs. Are we closer to a potential or previous resistance, or are we closer to a potential previous support? What would you guys say, right? It's not rocket science. It's very easy to see that it's overbought, right? Based off of recent patterns and previous resistance levels, we are approaching a previous resistance range. It's not that it has to get rejected, but again, this has acted as a previous support range, resistance now, and we're going back to retest. Again, this is why you just make yourself aware. Not that you have to make a decision just based off of previous patterns, but that you can't be surprised of like, oh my God, I don't get why it got rejected at 108. Well, what do you mean, right? It got rejected at 108 last time. And when we were selling off, this is where it found a support for a short period of time. There's consolidation here. Old supports become new resistance until we break above them. And it's very easy to see that we're at a potential resistance. And until we break above, I would not consider Google to be a position I would want to get into. If it pulls on back and it gets closer to that 91, then again, that takes us back to the idea of we're more on the oversold side. We're testing previous support range. It's not guaranteed that it has to recover right away. But again, Google is not a position that I would consider as a trade, more of a position that I would want to add more to as time goes on, right? One of the most valuable companies. It's been extremely bullish long term. This is a significant pullback, which for new investors is a great dip by opportunity for those that see it as just that. Uh, but for previous investors, right, if you've ever said, oh man, I wish I would have invested in Google, you know, two years ago, three years ago, well, you're literally getting it at the same price that it was trading at, you know, two years ago. Um, so with that being said, you saved yourself or you're coming around a new opportunity. So I just want to make sure that you are aware of that with the idea of looking at the larger time frames and being able to see that big picture. But also being aware of you know old support zones, new resistance zones, very easy to see that we're a little bit more on the overbought side and the RSI and the MACD support that as well. So let's go ahead and talk about JP Morgan. What better time to talk about a banking stock while most of them are still selling off, right? There's still a lot of uncertainty. Supposedly, the Federal Reserve and our government continues to talk about that our banking system is safe and resilient. I don't know about you guys, but it just doesn't seem that way, right? It seems like they're covering something up and or things are still kind of uncertain of how overly leveraged a lot of these banking institutions actually are. Um, I mean, the Federal Reserve printed $300 billion and added it to their balance sheet uh, to be able to supply some aid and liquidity um, for these banking institutions, right? In total, I think it was nearly $400 billion, 300 two weeks ago, uh, $94 billion uh, last week. We'll see how much we print this week, right? Uh, huge pullback right now on JP Morgan. If you think that banks are going to recover, Right now, you are presented with an amazing opportunity. If you think that the banks still have yet to sell off, then again, be very careful with where we're at right now. So it all comes down to what you think your market outlook is of this. As of right now, there's no indication of a reversal just yet. If you're part of my LPP team, you know exactly what I'm talking about with the three stages of a reversal, rejection, consolidation, and then confirmation. We're not at that confirmation stage just yet. We're still getting rejected, lower highs, lower lows, but we're also not making lower lows as of right now or any longer, right? We're, we're holding above that 123 support, which is great. And I guess only time will tell. If this thing begins to recover, break above that EMA, begins to show signs of higher highs, then great. We'll follow up with it and see if it actually begins to recover. But as of right now, from overall or current lows to previous highs of where it was before all of this began to happen... 15.1% upside is what it currently offers. And for something like JP Morgan, I mean, that's pretty significant, right? It's as close to, I think, as we will get um, to, you know, the, the pullback that we experienced uh, towards the later half of last year, right? So looking at the four hour time frame, we hit lows of 100. Right now we're trading at 125. So again, just something that I want to remind you that can JP Morgan get cheaper? Of course, right? The cheap can always get cheaper. Um, this thing, as of right now, I mean, it's not fully set that the banks are beginning to recover. So please just take that into consideration. And this is why you keep trading simple and you wait for that indication of a reversal. But I do think that it's very interesting that whatever bank you think you want to invest into, you know, watching it carefully is going to be very important. So let's go ahead and Orlando is asking me to break down. Rivian. So let's go ahead and break down Rivian. Here we go. R-I-V-N. Here we go. 
Rivian stock, I mean, in my opinion, and again, it's just that, in my opinion, Rivian stock is a perfect example of a stock that you would want to avoid. It's a perfect example of a pattern that you would want to avoid. It's a continuous descending pattern and it continues to sell off. So why overcomplicate it? Why be hopeful if it's been selling off for what, two years? Why why overcomplicate it, right? It went from highs of $179 to lows of $12. Sure, there's the possibility of this thing beginning to recover, but you don't have the nickel and diamond opportunity. It's been selling off for two years. So why are you trying to think that now is any different? Why not just set an alert and wait for confirmation? That's what I feel like an efficient trader would do, right? Not a hopeful trader. So it's kind of asking yourself that same question. What are you? Are you a hopeful trader hoping that it begins to recover or are you an efficient trader? You see an opportunity. Obviously, there's huge upside if it does begin to recover. You respect that. So you set your alert. And if it begins to break out, then you can follow up with it with effective alerts and just holding yourself accountable. There's no other reason to overcomplicate this. It's bearish, it's selling off, and it's continuously losing its investors' money. I would say this would be a huge red flag on why to stay off. Let's go ahead and break down Ford. We got um, one of our viewers asking to break down Ford. So we were showing signs of higher highs and higher lows, trading above the moving average. Now we're doing quite the opposite. Uh, this is a really good example of a stock that's kind of losing its momentum. Um, you can see that when we initially recovered we made highs of $15. We pulled on back, tested that same support. We recovered. It's a descending resistance. Didn't go as high as we did last time. We pulled on back, same support. And again, we sold off and we didn't go as high as we did last time, right around $13. So it looks like right now we have a resistance at 13, support at right around $10. I would just be very careful because if it continues to show this sign of weakness, then we can break below the support and continue to sell off. Obviously, this is why you have an alert for the break above. If this thing begins to break out, then yes, Ford does have huge upside. I, I don't normally would, you know, I wouldn't normally consider Ford as a stock that I would consider trading, uh, but more of a position that I would consider holding for a period of time. So if you think that you like it at $10 a share, then great, so be it. But just know that again, the cheap can always get cheaper. Ford does have a history of trying to recover as time goes on, uh, but it's been experiencing or kind of been going through a rough patch recently. So please just make sure that you are aware of that, right? You can always take a step back and look at the larger time frames and understand the highs, the lows, and kind of see where we currently sit at, and it's kind of in the middle. So maybe don't overcomplicate it and allow or wait for direction to be a little bit more clear. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So APAM, what's going on, Ozzy? So APAM, let's go ahead and break this one down. At $30 a share, you are saying that this is a swing trade. So what I consider this to be a swing trade. So we were bullish. I could see why someone would want to swing trade it during this time, right? When it pulls on back, it's still bullish. It's still trading above the moving average. It's showing signs of higher highs. It doesn't have to recover, but it did, right? As long as it stays within its pattern and with, with its previous trend, that makes sense. As of right now, I mean, with the idea that it's it retested the same support. So I see what you see in the sense that it pulled back to the same support level. You think that it's going to go back up to $39, which is what it did last time. And from lows of 30 to highs of 39, that's a 20, 20, 25% return. I mean, that's huge, right? And yeah, I mean, that can definitely happen. Um, my big, the thing that I just want to remind you is, you know, it has been struggling, right? Forming these lower highs, lower lows, it's been selling off. And what if it goes from 30 down to 25, right? So just as you take best case scenario into consideration, I think it's also important to take worst case scenario into consideration, right? Taking upside versus downside risk, just make sure that if you do choose to enter something like this, there's an extra layer of risk as the overall direction is not in your favor. So your job is not to avoid risk, your job is to manage it. So technically, this is not something that by the books you would want to trade because direction is against you. But if you do choose to trade it, just make sure that you have an exit plan that you don't end up bag holding and becoming someone like you know a lot of those Reddit traders where all they do is they pray for their stock to recover 
and blame everyone else for why it's not recovering. We don't have time for that, right? If you're going to take a trade, know that it can it comes at a form of risk. Hold yourself accountable. Manage that risk, right? I think those are words to live by. Uh, let's go ahead and break down the next stock. So we got City. What's going on, TJ? I appreciate you taking time. Hopefully, we earn your thumbs up. I haven't broken City Group uh, in quite some time, so it's ticker symbol C. <clears throat> So we can see that based off of recent patterns, um, you know, obviously selling off Citigroup uh, is a banking institution, so something to take into consideration. Uh, even prior to that, it wasn't even performing very well. I would say out of all the stocks out there that have to do with banking, um, I don't see why Citigroup would be the one that you focus on the most, right? Just to recover to where we were versus previous uh, highs. I mean, it's been all over the place in comparison to Goldman Sachs has a much more consistent overall pattern. When we talk about JP Morgan, a much more consistent overall pattern. And when, when we talk about BAC, which is Bank of America, I would say a more consistent overall pattern. And in comparison, I wouldn't say Citigroup. Um, I mean, in my opinion, I don't think it's as large of a banking institution as it is to those previous three that I just talked about. Um, but maybe that's just me. So when looking at Goldman Sachs, 104 billion market cap, JP Morgan, 367 billion. And then we got Bank of America at 217 million. And we got Citigroup still at a very large 83 billion. So yes, it's still big, not as big, but in comparison to what I see out there, I would say JP Morgan, in my opinion, or Bank of America are the bigger two, right? The ones I would focus on more. What's going on, German Shepherd Daphne Channel? What's going on? So you're asking me to break down NVIDIA. Um, I thought I broke that one. Did I not break that one down? I did not break that one down. Let me go ahead and break down NVIDIA again. If you want me to break down your top stock, just feel free to share it in the live chat. And don't forget to drop a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Um, so NVIDIA, obviously a great performing stock, very similar to AMD. I would say that NVIDIA is outperforming AMD, as we can see. Uh, both of them are manufacturers for microchip devices. Um, we can see that NVIDIA is now very overbought. In my opinion, based off of how close we are to the previous resistance level um, and knowing how much downside risk there is, I think it's safe to say for me that Congrats to everyone that invested in NVIDIA. I feel like I just missed this rally. Uh, if you're trying to get in this late, right? We always talk about ratios, right? Your, your job is not to avoid risk. Your job is to manage it. With that being said, what is your upside potential versus your downside risk? Downside risk is much greater than your upside potential. And because of that, again, I would just say kind of just respect how overbought we are already and just knowing that, knowing and respecting when you just simply missed out on a play already. If you want to jump into it, again, all power to you. You're an adult. You can do whatever it is that you want. My big tip on that would be watch for a break if pattern. If it actually begins to break its pattern, then again, your job is to manage that risk and hold yourself accountable and exit that position if you actually begin to see lower lows or lower highs, maybe below the moving average on the four hour time frame. But again, something that we can follow up with. But I think in a video is a beautiful ascending uptrend pattern. I think it's outperforming a majority of stocks in 2023. I just feel like if you were already invested in it, great. If you haven't, but you're thinking of it, I think that you're too late to the rally. That's my opinion. Um, let's go ahead and just do one more. Up. And I'm looking at NASDAQ futures right now. And it looks like NASDAQ futures are up 0.2% since they opened, right? Um, so that's going to be quite interesting for market open tomorrow. So let's go ahead and break down two more stocks and then we will call it a live stream. Okay. <clears throat> so WEBL. We're gonna break that one down. W E B L. Alrighty. So when looking on the day chart, no. Okay. So big red flag on this. You can see how aggressive it is when it comes down to that descending pattern. Um, just not something that I would personally want to partake in or put myself through. We are showing signs of, you know, hey, maybe this is the overall bottom, but it's been selling off for such a long period of time that I just wouldn't overcomplicate it, right? There's so many stocks out there. There's so many ETFs out there that offer great opportunity. Why put your money, why overcomplicate it and put your money in something that 
just hasn't confirmed an uptrend in a very long period of time. If you think now is different, then again, I'm not here to convince you that it's not, but just set your alert and look out for yourself, right? With so much opportunity out there, I just don't know why you're banking on something that hasn't happened to happen when it's there's so much opportunity elsewhere. Uh, that's, I think, the easiest way in which I can explain it, right? Yes, it's no longer making new lows since, you know, um, late last year, but it's not necessarily making higher highs. And I, I guess that's kind of what I would look out for. So let me know what you think about that. I already broke down Google Christian. So I did break that down a little bit earlier today. Um, and you can see it here. So we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to do one last one. So again, if you want me to break down your top stock, share it in the live chat and make sure you drop a thumbs up. <clears throat> All right. Maybe we'll do one or two. We'll see. CRSR. I don't think we've done that in a while. CRSR. All right. Um, we're going to do another one after this. I don't really like this one. Strong descending pattern, a lot of consolidation. Lacking progress on the upside. I'll set my alert for what the case might be because it is beginning to trade above the moving average in the very early stages. So I see why you're paying attention to it. I just, you know, it was selling off for such a long period of time. Wouldn't it wouldn't it be horrible that you jump in now and then it just continues to sell off, right? Uh, this is why if you do jump in, then your job is to hold yourself accountable and manage risk if it breaks below the moving average and or you can just wait for confirmation, wait for this thing to break above like, you know, $19, $20, something that it hasn't done in the past before, actually begin to show signs of growth and then ask yourself that simple question, am I missing out by not being invested? And if the answer is yes, then you can ease into your position, right? You don't have to overcomplicate it. But yeah, definitely something that we can follow up with. So, all right. And we just had, we had Ramon Hope um, just enter our GTR giveaway. He just picked up a GTR mouse pad and that earned him, I think, 100 and 150 entries, something like that. So congrats, Roman, on entering. So here we go. Let's see. We filmed a couple videos for you guys for that GTR giveaway or $50,000 cash, right? Whichever one you prefer. So... All right, here we go. I want to break down, yeah, Costco. We haven't broken down Costco in a while. I see a lot of ones that we've broken down quite recently. So Costco, a lot of consolidation based off recent patterns, overall lows of 460, overall highs of 535. So again, something to take into consideration. Costco is something that is a very well-performing stock. You can see, again, a beautiful uptrend pattern. So if you are someone that's absolutely new to trading and you want to make sure that you don't take super risky trades and or super risky investments, then one of the things, again, is don't overcomplicate it. Put your, mo put your money in stocks that have been showing signs of continuous growth. And Costco is doing a beautiful job with just that, right? A lot of consolidation here, so it could pull back if it breaks below its support, but very easy to see that break of pattern if it does happen. But overall, again, from where we're at right now to a more common resistance level, I mean, this isn't a stock that you're gonna make it or break it in, but you know, anything over 10% is still really good, especially in the current market that we're in right now with the uncertain team. So this is already beginning to show signs of reversal. I can see why you would want to potentially maybe swing trade the lows and then sell at the highs, buy the lows, sell the highs, buy the lows, sell the highs, and those tend to yield about a 10% return if you play them effectively, right? 20% from a very aggressive sell-off to a very aggressive push, but even on the conservative side, being able to capture half of that is still a win to me. So I don't want to take too much of your guys' time. Again, if you have any questions or if I missed your top stock and you need me to break it down, then again, I'm always available. You can send me a direct message via Discord, and that's that first link in the description down below. You did hear me talk about them in this video. It's my Learn Plan Profit Group. It's the only group that I work with and that I trade live with every single day. So if you want to be able to watch me trade live as soon as tomorrow, click the second link in the description down below and learn a little bit more about our LPP team. So um, if you do sign up for Learn Plan Profit today, 
you do get entered 5,000 automatic times for our GTR giveaway or $50,000 cash. Another way that you can enter the giveaway is also by heading on over to shoptechbuds.com and for every $1 that you spend, it equals five entries. So pretty cool way to get entered. That's that fourth link in the description down below um, and we'll leave it at that, at just that. So appreciate your time. Hope that we're in your thumbs up. If you're part of the LPP team, I will see you tomorrow at Market Open for our live trading session. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on your post notifications, drop a thumbs up. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on our green note. Take it easy.